Okay, here we go again. There it is, there it is. That's my traditional every time. Yeah, here we go. Hey, wait, ready? Okay, one, two, three. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, one other thing before you go. Look at the wrist at the end there, Jason. You were like, one other, one other thing before we go. I, I know we're really, really late. That is totally my fault. I'm sorry. That's all right. It's okay. Hey, so you're taking responsibility for accountability. I like that. Jason. Taking accountability. That's good. Uh, well, today we're going to talk about the 13 things mentally strong people don't do. That they that, that they don't do. Instead of the things that they do do, let's talk about the things that they don't do. <laughs> do do. And they do do. <laughs> No, no, okay, wait, wait, wait. How many things? Thirteen things. Mentally strong people do not do. not do. do. Okay. So let's get, jump right into it. The thirteen things that mentally strong people do not do, and I'll try to make it brief because I know we're on a time crunch today, so I will be as brief as I can. The first thing they don't do is they don't waste time feeling sorry for themselves. They don't sit around thinking how pathetic they are and and uh, how bad they feel, they don't have time for that. They're strong people, they don't do that. They don't, they don't sit around feeling sorry for themselves. In fact, um, self-pity is easily the most destructive and non-pharmaceutical narcotic. It is as addictive as any other drug and gives momentary pleasure and separates uh, the victim from reality. You're not a victim. Your in, survival. Most, in most cases, yes. In most cases, yes. And, 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 and whether or not you stand up or not is going to determine whether or not you're painting yourself as a victim or not. Mm -hmm. And if you continue to be that. So they don't waste time feeling sorry for themselves. Number two, they don't give away their power. And I've talked to some of you guys about this before. They don't give away their power. You have to take your power back sometimes. You can't allow them to drag you down. Remember the difference between a drain and a, and a fountain, right? A fountain flows and goes and, and is free and it, and it creates life. A drain's number one job is to suck. So you can be a, a fountain or you can be a drain. I prefer to be a fountain. And then therefore I don't wanna give my power away. I wanna have the power to flow. I wanna have the power to go. Can you elaborate a little bit though on not giving your power to other people? Like what examples of giving your power to other people as well as you know not? Sure. I can, I mean, I, yeah, I, mean, I, I, I think I get the gist of it. I just want to get a list a little. You don't want you here. don't want to have them occupying the space in your head rent free. Yeah, yeah. don't let them live rent free in your head. Let them live rent free in your head. That's right. And sometimes that happens. We're we're so attached to a memory uh, of something that it actually is affecting our our, our everyday life. They're they're living rent free and your head. You're allowing them to have power over you. You gotta take your power back, like Rage Against the Machine says. Gotta take the power back. <laughs> it's a good song, right? Number two, they don't shy away from change. Life is change. It's always going to be change. It's the only thing we can count on for sure, is it's going to change. It can't rain forever and it can't be sunshine forever either. It's going to rain. From time to time, it's going to it's going to the clouds are going to to appear. And it's also going to be sunshine from time to time. Mm -hmm. We can count on it. We know it. So don't get attached to things and stay attached to where you're you're concerned about uh, whether or not something's going to change or not. It it is going to change. There's no getting around it. Dale Carnegie says, when we hate our enemies. We are giving them power over us, power over our sleep, appetites, our blood pressure, our health, and our happiness. And James Gordon says, it's not, this, it's not that some people have willpower and some people don't. It's that some people are read, ready to change and other people are not. Two good points on both of those, those topics. Number four, they don't focus on things they can't control. What can we control? Ourselves. Just ourselves. That's it. It's the only thing we can control. We're riding down on the highway. We have no power over what another vehicle does around us. We can't stop the person from in front of us from slamming on their brakes. 
We can't stop the truck next to us to swerving into our lane. They're going to do what they're going to do. And we have no control over it. We can only uh, uh, do what we're going to do. And I'm moving through these pretty quickly because I know we're in time crunch. Maya Angelo says, huh? We can stay a little later too. Okay. You may not control all the events that happen to you, but you can decide not to be uh, reduced by them. You can't control things except for yourself. You guys know this already. Number five, they don't worry about pleasing everyone. That's a hard one. It's very hard. Because we want to we want to make people happy. We want to please people. People pleaser. Yeah. It it must be horrible to be a people pleaser. Yeah. They always have to 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 get the approval of somebody else or to make them feel good and if we don't make them feel good, we feel bad. Yeah. That must be horrible. It's, Been down that road. It's, it's, not, it's, not just, it's not just horrible. I mean, well, it is, but it's also incredibly. It's it, it's so draining. It takes up so much energy. I'm sorry because I I I've spent I've literally spent like a whole deck. I spent like a whole like well maybe not a whole decade, but years on that on that path. And you're right. I mean, it's draining. Yeah. You know, and the last thing that we want to be is be around a drain. Well, we're people pleasing. We're, that's exactly what we're. We're being around the drain. And remember, their goal, their number one job, is to suck. So we want to be around fountain people. We want to be around people that bring us up, and then we don't have to please all the time. Number six: Don't fear taking calculated risks. They don't actually fear taking risks. We're riding down that highway. Yeah, we can't control anybody around us. But that doesn't stop us from getting on the highway. It doesn't stop us from, from, from changing lanes. It doesn't stop us from going the speed limit. It doesn't stop us from passing another vehicle. We still take the calculated risk to jump on that highway. Same thing in life. We got to take that risk. We just go for it. Some of you might have a trouble speaking in public. Maybe even doing a book report or a, a talk in front of the, this group might even be difficult. But you take the risk. You take the chance. Number seven, they don't dwell on the past. When you dwell on the past, you're giving it power. It's still it's very hard to It's hard. It's hard. It's hard. Using the car analogy, if we're if we're focusing on the rearview mirror the whole time, we're gonna crash. We're gonna crash. Driving a car is a great analogy for for living life. But it is very hard. But I agree with Ryan, though it is very very hard. It's it's very hard. That doesn't mean that doesn't mean it can't be done or that it shouldn't be done. But it's hard. Because we give it power over ourselves, and we don't mean to, but it's so it, it does have weight. There's a lot of weight to a memory. There's a lot of weight to a tragic event that may have occurred to us. Uh, where was it? You were talking about you know the past. Yeah, you know, the past and how you know. Again, it's all, you know it's very. I mean, not not to say it can or shouldn't be done because it definitely should, but. You know, it's, it's hard to it's hard to you know not focus on the past for a lot of people, including myself. Yeah, and and it can be painful, and sometimes we get used to feeling that pain. Sometimes, I mean, just I just want to tell you personally, for me, a lot of the time, I, I agree with what you just said. But yeah, sometimes we just get used to the pain. Yeah. I, I definitely agree with that, but I also I also think sometimes it's like kind of a damn if you do, damn if you don't, and it's a, well, sort of meaning that, like for example, for example. You know, holding on to it is painful, but letting go is also pain. It's just it can be just as painful. And again, that doesn't mean you shouldn't let it go. Just I suppose it depends on what it is, but uh, yeah, I yeah, see no, it also there. depends on what it is. But again, but again, I do think I do think that for me, a lot of things are like that. And again, yes, when, when I have finally let it go, does it feel good? Yes, but but again, the process of letting go can sometimes be just it can 
It's something that would be even more painful than holding on to it. Have you ever been ice skating and you spent like two hours in your ice skates? Mm -hmm. You get used to it, your feet are hurting. Mm -hmm. You, you, it, you, you, you're having a good time, but your feet are hurting and they're killing you and you go outside, you take off your skates and how do you feel after you, t you take your skates off? Good. You can finally breathe. Yeah, but then it's like, oh, 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 it feels weird walking yeah. for the first time. I haven't so, been ice skating though in, in, in years. After skiing. after skiing or skating or anything like that and you're, and you just feel strange. It, you don't feel like it's normal. Yeah. And that could be the same thing of like letting go of a hard memory. You I, know, it may be painful, but you're used to it. No, I again, I agree with all those things. Again, I'm not trying to invalidate anything. Oh, I know. And you're I'm not. not saying that you shouldn't let go because usually once you do let go, I agree. It feels, I mean, it, at least it eventually feels way better. I'm just saying that again, that again, it can be, it, it, like again, holding on can be painful, but 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 letting go can also be just, or at least again, the process can be just as it, or maybe even more painful. Right, right, right. Right, exactly. You guys are, are becoming experts at, uh, at doing it. You're, and that, this is how we heal. Mm -hmm. We have to, we, we have, we have to uh, root out the, the, the infection that's in the wound. Mm -hmm. And then eventually it becomes a scar, you know. And then I always think that scars are like designs, creating an, a piece of art, making you a piece of art. Mm -hmm. You have your unique scars and designs. I mean, they're kind of part of who we are. In a way. They're part of who we are. Thanks to Jackson. Are oh, you talking about the raft bit? The, and the, and the raft. I got too many now. Well, let's just look on the... No, uh, dude, that's got to be the funniest scar that I've gotten, though. We were, we were uh, coursing around on the raft when I first got here. And I have a scar on my belly because he scratched me. Oh, really? Yeah, on his toe. Ooh, <laughs> toe man. I, I still have a, have a little scar on my forehead. Like Harry, well, kind of like Harry Potter. <laughs> because I was, because when I was like seven years old, my dad accidentally, I mean, I was like running around playing, like at that age, I would often just have, would not have much awareness. I just go goof around, not really paying attention to any of my surroundings. And my dad, and, and, my, and we were like getting ready to go somewhere. And my dad literally by accident closed, closed the trunk on my car. Oh man, that had to hurt. I had, I had to get stitches. Jeez, that had to hurt. My uh, older brother randomly asked her to make you lie, so I have a little scar here. I was fine. Oh, Jeez. Well, we all have scars, and we have them internally, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, scars on our heart, scars yeah, yeah, on our not, mind. Not, yeah, scars aren't always a literal thing. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Well, Ralph Waldo Emerson says, do not be too timid and squeamish about your actions. All life is an experiment. The more experience, the experiments you make, the better. Number eight, they don't make the same mistakes over and over. They learn from their mistakes. They learn from their mistakes. I, what that brings to my mind is the scene in The Lion King where Rikishi, Rafiki, Rafiki thank you Rafiki, uh, smacks Simba in the head. <laughs> he and he's like, the fence and yeah, he's like, ah, what did you do that for? And he swung it again and he, and he moved out of the way. He said, ah, yes, the past can hurt. But we have to learn from our learn from the past. That's Raven, the Raven, Raven's uh, Rafiki, Rafiki. What how do you say his name? Rafiki, Rafiki, Rafiki. Rafiki. Also, Rafiki. what was I gonna say? It's also supposedly what Tyler B said. He said that it's also kind of like what the phrase "turn the other cheek" means. It's like if somebody slaps, it doesn't actually mean like it's like, it actually, that's what he said. That the actual meaning is like if somebody like slaps you, you know, you don't let them slap you again. You get out of the way. Raven, you have a young. Business. No. Hi, buddy. Oh, sorry. Hello. Is it trying to talk to you? Why is she so like? Just getting something. No. I guess she was like. Hello. So they don't. Uh, another thing is that they don't resent other people's success. They don't resent other people's success. And oftentimes we do that. We get jealous of other people on how they, and how they they are um, achieving things in life. Is that number eight? The, the whoa, sorry, no, number seven was they don't. Uh, they they don't make the same mistakes over yeah, and over again. Yeah, yeah. They actually learn from the mistakes. Mm -hmm. You're right. All right. Good call. 
Yeah. Nelson Mandela says resentment is like drinking poison and then hoping it will kill your enemy. Remember that that uh, comparison is the thief of joy. Comparison is the thief of joy. Is that, is that a tribute to anyone or does nobody really know? You know? I don't know where that came from. Well, you, of course, there's also a lot of quotes that are misattributed. That's also another important thing to remember. But again, I'm just wondering if there's any individual that you know of at least. I don't know who said that. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to think that I came up with it, but I'm sure I heard it from somebody. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry, Raven, but I... I, I You've I, heard that I, one before? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, number nine? Or yeah, number nine. nine. They don't resent other people's success. No, that was number eight, I thought you said. No, that was number nine. Then what was number eight? Number eight is they don't make the same mistake over and over again. Wait, then, was number seven they don't dwell on the path? They don't dwell on the path. Okay, okay yeah, no, my, my bad. I, I, got the, I got the order mixed up. Okay. Sorry, they don't resent other people's success and I've been guilty of it myself uh, I'll raise my hand on this one I, I have been there I have uh, I, I, you know I I've seen other people succeeding and I've become jealous I think I'm um, again Raven I think almost everyone has at one time yeah, or another. Really yeah you know like I'm just Okay, I'm, I'm not. I'm glad that you you know admitted it, but you know I think again I think everyone in this room and almost every human being at one point or another has resented somebody else's success. Yep, indeed, indeed. And now I, I try to look at things a little differently. Now I try to look at things like there's enough success in the world for everybody. There's enough abundance in the world for everyone to have a piece. You know, you can have your own piece I don't of know, pie. Man, there's eight million people. There's eight million, million pieces eight million. of pie. In one slice, there's abundance for enough for everybody. Yeah, so I, I get kind of excited to see people succeed because that. Well, I'm just gonna have like a grain of pizza. No, I'm, I'm just, not gonna have any pizza or pie. Yeah. <laughs> but I will. Uh, no, no, I'm just saying there's a, there's a piece of success for everybody if they had. And when I see other people succeed now, what I try to remind myself is that it's wonderful because it's proof that anybody can do it. Mm -hmm. Anybody can succeed. Anybody can push on. Anybody can make it. Anybody can do it. If one person can do it, another person can do it. So it's just proof that you can be successful. You can be successful. You can be amazing. Number 10. They don't give up after the first time they fail. They don't give up after the first time they fail. Failure is inevitable. We're all going to fail from time to time. Failure is inevitable. It's what you do with that failure that makes the difference. It's whether or not you can step up, and stand back up. One of these guys get defeated. It's not going to be about whether or not they won or lost. It's going to be whether or not how quickly they can get back up. I've said it to you guys before, but it's the person who stays down. That's... That then becomes their fault. If you gave it your best, you worked as hard as you could, and you still lost just because it wasn't your night, then it's no big deal. Failure, that just means it's something for you, you to learn from. It's whether or not you stay down and you're not willing to get back up. That's when it becomes an issue. That's when it becomes an issue. So that's when it also becomes your fault. If you decide to take that loss, and it defeats you as a person, and you don't get back up on your feet, the only person to blame is you. Not the person who knocked you down. It, that was a life lesson. It was you not standing back up. Number 11. They don't fear alone time. How many of us dread just riding in the car without the radio? or without the, the music going, yeah? Or how about just going to sleep with the silence? A lot of people can't even go to sleep without the TV on or, or some kind of noise machine or something going on. They can't stand the silence. Yeah, yeah, my parents, they have that, you know, they have that thing that, you, that some people get. That, like, the noise that, machine? Like, that white noise that, that can help some people sleep, you know? Yeah. I, some people can't be alone with their own thoughts. Honestly, to me, the biggest thing I have a hard time sitting with is just... That was you? 
Yeah, yeah, no, it's, to me, it's it, the only thing I have the hardest time with, and part of the reason why I do a lot of stuff I do is because I have a really hard time sitting with uncertainty. You know, I know life is basically full of uncertainty, but, yeah, like. Yeah, because the only thing you can count on is change. Yeah, but, um, but, you know, yeah, like, personally, that's something that I, I don't know if that counts as alone time, but for me, like, that's when, when I feel, like, uncertain about, when I feel like I'm not really certain about something, and, like, yeah. Right. Like that's what I have a hard time with sitting with. Uncertainty, not sure what the things are going to go. Well, I'll go back to the, the, the interstate in our analogy. Mm -hmm. It could be interstate at dark and, and at night. Mm -hmm. Not sure if the road's still in front of us, past our headlights. Mm -hmm. We just take that leap anyway. We take the chance anyway. We know the road's not going to stay straight, it's going to turn, it's going to twist. We know there's going to be other people, cars on the road with us. They might try to cut us off. They might go too slow for our taste. They might try to run us over. But we keep going anyway. We stay on our journey anyway, despite. We keep moving forward. After all, slamming your car into reverse on the interstate isn't a great idea. I've seen that happen. You've seen it happen? God forbid. The question is, can you ride without the radio? I, I mean, I often like having the radio on, but I can't do it without it. Can you sit alone? It's uncomfortable, but I like the silence. It's common. Like the sound of silence? Yeah. Again, it really depends. For me, it, it all depends on, <laughs> it all, for me, it all depends on just my, my current mindset, you know? Like there are times where, I, where I'm perfectly fine with just sitting there in silence and, and being with my thoughts. And I actually feel like I need those times. Yeah. You know, at least sometimes. But then there's also times where it's like, where, where I'm like so on edge that I almost be, that, that like I can't, like, you know. Right, yeah. right. I understand that. So like for me, it like all depends. How about this one? Number 12. They don't feel the world owes them anything. Successful people don't feel the world owes them anything. They know that the world doesn't owe them a thing. Not a single person owes you a living. Not a single person owes you your next meal. Not a single person owes you a damn thing. You came into this world alone. You'll go out of this world alone. You live this world for you. And no one owes you anything. I see, I don't get entitled people who think that, that the, the world owes them something. I don't know about you guys, but I've worked for every single thing I've ever gotten. This building doesn't come at a, at a cheap price. And I don't just mean financially, I mean my time, my effort. My music career came at a, at a steep price. No one gave it to me, I had to work for it. Nobody gave this to me, I had to work for it. These guys are training for fights. No one's gonna give them their, their victory. They're gonna have to earn it. No one owes it to them. They have to put in the work. You have to put in your time. No matter what you want to do, it could be being a lawyer, it could be being a NASCAR driver, it could be a dojo owner, it could be a fighter, it could be the best darn restaurant owner in the in the world, or just the best cook on the line. No one's gonna no one's gonna do it for you. You have to take the step. You have to do it. You have to put it in the sweat. You had to put in the blood and the tears. The last one is they don't expect immediate results. And this is a common problem nowadays. You see people who not only feel entitled that the world owes them something, but they want it now. They don't want to wait, they want it now because they get instantaneous stimulation through the internet. Instant gratification. Instant gratification. Instant, you know. Yeah, it's in pleasure. They want to know something, all they have to do is pop, 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 it comes right up. They want to see something, no problem, pop, 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 it comes right up. They want a burger and they want it now, they go to the fast food and get the burger quickly. If you got to wait five minutes for it, people start getting ticked off. Now they just get it delivered to their door. Too. Now they even give it delivered to their door. That's right. They don't even have to go anywhere. Have you ever seen that, that movie, man, that, um, where the people sit in the pods? And they're actually these really 
uh, like soft. The Matrix. It's not the Matrix, but it's like the Matrix. It's a cartoon. Wally. Is it, it's Wally, isn't it's it? it? Wally. Yeah. Yes. We're talking about how, how fat everybody is now. Like it's fat, like, and they're just yeah, sitting they're all, in the pod. They're just in those pods, and they're just everything is being brought to them. Yeah. They don't have to do anything. Yep. I mean, I feel like the world is going in that direction. Like we don't have to do anything. We're entitled. We're, we're lazy and we want immediate results. And we don't get immediate results. We may just throw a temper tantrum like a big baby. Where's the hard work? Where's, where's the suffering? Life has to have suffering. Life has to have failures. Life has to have these things. And now I, I see these, these people that, that get so triggered by, by life that becomes hard. Well, life is hard and it's hard by design. You got to live hard. Live hard. Life is hard by design. We're not meant to be soft little creatures, these, these little fragile little beings. We're not fragile. We're meant to be survivors. Men, and men in general, are meant to be fighters. They're meant to be warriors, hunters, hunters. We're built for it. Our body structure's made for it. We're not meant to be pansies. We're not meant to be entitled little snot-nosed brats. We're not meant, meant to expect immediate results. We get our results after we go to hunting. We want results, we go hunting. What's the difference between a, a lion and a gazelle? The lion hunts the gazelle. The lion hunts the gazelle. The lion's the predator, the gazelle's the prey. It's prey. The gazelle runs. The gazelle runs away. And when the lion's not chasing them anymore, the gazelle stops running. <laughs> but the lion's not going to stop chasing them. You know why? Because the survival of their, their pride depends on it. The survival of their family depends on it. They're not going to go, oh, I'm going to give up on that meal. Or it's like, it's like, you know, it's believed by many that, you know, back before the, the you know, the Neolithic revolution, many humans were what you call persistence hunters. Do you know what that means? Well, I know what persistence means. Well, it just basically means that, like, like basically, we, you know, even though we're we're not the fastest runners, we, I don't know if you know, we humans are actually the best runners in the world in terms of like endurance. That is not like in terms of speed. And they believe that some of that comes from the fact that 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 we made, you know, we're persistence hunters, where we would follow like animals, continually follow animals, even ones that were much faster than us, until you know, for really long distances, until it finally overheated and had to stop. You know, to... I believe that. Mm. I believe that. The lion has that mindset. Well, I'm not going to quit. And you can choose to be a lion or a gazelle. It's up to you. But I can tell you this, a lion decides when it eats. A lion decides, I'm going to go after this thing and I'm going to get it and I'm not going to stop until I get it because my family depends on it. My life depends on it. And you change that mindset to a lion mindset. It becomes massively different than a gazelle mindset. The gazelle will just graze. It stops running when it doesn't have to run anymore. Although also, never mind. <laughs> I, was gonna, I, was I love your a, facts. I was, no, I was going to make a, I was going to make a, a pop culture reference. It was a, it was a, it was going to be a joke. Oh. I was going to say that a gazelle, people probably aren't going to get it though. You also know though that gazelle, you know, they, they want to try everything. <laughs> yeah, no, nobody got it. Uh. <laughs> Did you get it, Trevor? No. Joke goes out. That, that, that's why, that's, that, that's why I didn't want to say it because I didn't think anybody was going to get it. I wish, honestly, I wish Rick were here because if he were here, he may have actually He would have gotten it. He would have gotten it. <laughs> So you have a choice. You could do the things that successful people um, do by not doing the things that unsuccessful do. Have the mind of a lion, like a lion. Not like a gazelle, not a victim. You're not fragile. No one here is a, a victim of anything anymore. Even if you were a victim at one time, you're not a victim now. You know why? You're standing back up. You're standing up. You're brushing yourself off. 
You're making yourself stronger. You're making yourself better. You're a fighter. You're a survivor. Sure, sure you have scars. But again, scars are like designs, making us a beautiful piece of artwork. A living, walking, breathing piece of art. Nobody should die without scars. Everybody should have scars, especially men. No offense to women, but especially men. Because we were born to be warriors, born to be fighters, born to be the ones that hunt, born to be the king of the jungle. Okay, wait, I'm sorry, one other thing. Did I, forgive me, again, I may have just lost track, but did you get to the, the number 13, the last one, or, or no? That was, they don't expect immediate results. Oh, that, that, oh that's number 13? Okay, okay, just, just making sure. For a second, I thought we still had one more to go. Napoleon Hill says patience, persistence, and um, makes uh, an unbeatable combination for success. Patience and persistence. Okay, I think that was a good discussion. I got through it pretty quickly. Um, any, any other comments?